it bothers me when people don't want horses to be horses. They just want horses to be machines. Hey, bitch, and welcome back to another video of me talking about people I hate. Wait, 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 wait. Let me redo that. Let me redo that. Hey, bitch, and welcome back to another video of Let's Judge Horse Trainers. There we go. Today we are going to be judging Warwick Schiller. I have only seen, I believe, a few of his videos and so far I actually really like him. So I decided to react to him just because I don't feel like I have too much of a bias already. The whole purpose of this series is not just to call out bad trainers, it's also to talk about good trainers as well and show people that there are plenty of good horse trainers that are out there on the internet that people should be following and watching and listening to. Subscribe and turn your notifications on because every time I film a Let's Judge Horse Trainers video, prior to that, I do polls on which horse trainer you guys would like for me to react to. So if you would like to be a part of the creation of these videos, definitely hit the subscribe button. Furthermore, I want to point out lately in a lot of the comment sections of me asking people which horse trainers they want me to react to, a lot of people have been suggesting individuals who are not professional trainers. I don't have any problem with reacting to people who are not actually horse trainers in my Raleigh Reacts videos, but anytime we film a Let's Judge Horse Trainers series or video, it needs to be somebody who is an actual professional horse trainer, or at least has the qualifications to consider themselves an actual professional horse trainer. Because I have noticed a few people who are not horse trainers, who are just lower level YouTubers, have been getting suggested a lot. And there's nothing wrong with that. They could be good people, decent trainers, whatever, but they're not professionals. So the whole purpose of this series is to react to people who are professional trainers, or at least consider themselves professional trainers and post regular training videos to the internet. So Warwick Schiller, let's read his bio first. As always, we read the bios first. Since beginning his YouTube channel in 2011, Wow, this dude's been around longer than I have. Australian-born Warwick Schiller has become a popular worldwide horse training educator with a background in the high-performance equestrian sport of reining, competing at two World Equestrian Games. Warwick's primary goal is now in educating horse owners of every discipline. He is excited to show people how easy it is to effectively communicate with their horses and create deep, authentic relationships that result in a relaxed, connected, and present horse and human. He does this primarily through his online video library and also his YouTube videos and the Journey On podcast. Again, I have definitely seen some of this guy's videos. So we're going to be reacting to one of the most viewed videos on his channel, which is touching a foal that can't be touched. Every time I see people working with foals, I'm like, this could go either way. This could go either way. I don't know. G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and I want to introduce you to our new foal chance. Hey mister, how are you going? So he's about uh, five weeks old now I think. He's out of Bella here and he's actually a three-quarter brother to the horse I showed at the Water Equestrian Games last year. So he's by the same sire and his mother here, Bella, she is a half-sister to uh, Petey's mother. So. Petey's mother's by a horse named Custom Chrome, and this mare's by a horse named Custom Chrome. Hey, mister, how are you going? And so I have been posting on social media how I haven't actually been touching Chance right here. Um, he's, we've allowed him to come and interact with us. Like, if he wants to come sniff us, that's fine. But I actually, none of us have actually laid a hand on Chance. And there's a, there's a reason I'm doing that. You know, in the past, I've handled these folds quite young and got them used to a lot of different things and it and it works fine if you just want a really just quiet sort of a horse but I do think they lose just a little bit of that that spark in there and uh, you know it's funny when you you start posting things on social media I've been telling people on social media that I'm not actually 
haven't actually touched him yet and I'm not planning to touch him for a little while and uh, it's amazing the the opinions you get about you know people's opinions on that and everybody's entitled to their own opinion this is where I'm at right now but I had a um, one of the reasons I don't want to touch him I want to keep that natural curiosity in there and I've got a I've got a uh, short video to show you here. I was in Australia earlier this year and a friend of mine has a foal there and she said she can't touch him. And I'm gonna show you this video in a second and it'll show you how I went about touching this foal for the first time. And she said she, you know, she's tried to touch him and she can't touch him. And this stuff's all based on something I learned from a horseman named Luke Thomas in Australia a couple of years ago. And Luke's an amazing horseman. And, he has a job once a year handling about 150 unweaned thoroughbred folds. And I went out there for about 10, 12 days and, and went through a set of those with Luke and really learned some really cool stuff. And it really kind of changed the way I think about interacting with folds. You guys are going to be surprised by what I have to say, but honestly, I totally agree with this. The reason I totally agree with not touching a foal is because I think a lot of people easily ruin foals at a very early point in their life by just being way too hands-on and not at all letting the horse develop into a horse and behave like a horse. They like to separate them from their mothers at a very early age. The best teacher for a horse is another horse, and that includes stuff like behavior, manners, etc., Horses are going to be the best teachers for horses, especially young horses. I personally believe that it's incredibly important for the psychological development of a foal to grow up around its mom for as long as possible in a decent environment before separating them and before humans intervene to try and start handling and training the horse. I think that all horses need to get a good foundation of what it means to be a horse and behave like a horse before people start intervening. Now, to elaborate a little bit more, do I think that people are going to ruin a horse by going in at an early stage and starting to handle them if they're handling them properly, etc. No, absolutely not. I think it's incredibly easy to ruin foals at a very young age by improper handling, which is an important thing to note. And it's much easier to ruin a foal with improper handling than it is an adult horse. Foals, a lot of the time, if you ruin them during the developmental stages of their life, a lot of that shit can become permanent. You know, one thing that's a good example is I talk about how Link absolutely hates going in the trailer and it's a nightmare to get him in the trailer. And that is simply because when he was a baby, somebody had completely ruined him when it came to trailering and that was just ingrained into him for the rest of his life. No matter how much training anybody else did, he always puts up a fight and he's always hesitant, he's always nervous anytime you get him in a trailer. I swear, I had to have him professionally trailered from California up here to Washington during the last move. He had to be in a stallion-sized box stall to prevent himself from hurting himself because that's how nervous he is inside a trailer, which is honestly something that cannot be untaught to him. So the point that I'm making is it's incredibly easy to psychologically damage a foal during the developmental stages of their lives. And I think that a lot of people want to get hands-on with a foal because they think it's really cute and they want to be there to pet it every day and they want to start halter training it at like a month old and they just want to be able to handle it like it's their own baby. No, foals are baby horses. Let them grow up and learn how to be horses. Let them stay with their moms for a while. Let them learn things and really become a horse, which is what he's talking about, which is so important. There's a difference between leaving them out in a field where they have no contact with people at all, which is not that great if you want the foal to end up being a decent riding horse or working horse in some way. You should still keep them somewhat around people where they're exposed to people. They're not afraid of people. Just like what he's doing, just kind of being around the foal every day, the foal sees him, knows that he's not a threat, but he's not going up and messing with the foal and trying to put a halter on it, trying to put a lead rope around its butt, trying to start teaching the foal things, right? Taking it away from its mom. He's not doing that. So there's a huge difference because I do think that a horse is going to be a lot more difficult to manage 
just like a wild horse would be if it grew up with just other horses and was never around people. But a lot of people think that if they don't start manhandling their foals at such a young age, their foal's going to have problems, which is honestly the opposite of the truth and reality. That foal's probably going to grow up to be a much better foal if you let them be a horse. It bothers me when people don't want horses to be horses. They just want horses to be machines. So have a look at this video with this. This is me first walking into the, into this, uh, the pen he was living in with this, this uh, unhandled foal that the owner says she can't touch. Hello, sweetheart. So right then, he turned and looked at me like that. And when he does, I'm just going to go away. I really want to have him... Hey, sweet, I'm going to catch you. I would really want to have him thinking... What I don't want to do is have him going away from me. So I don't want to try to touch him or anything like that that would cause him to, to leave. And right here, he's sniffing me. What I wouldn't do is turn around and try to touch him. I'm going to go over here. I kind of want him keeping... I kind of... I kind of want to keep him wanting more. So whenever he comes towards me, I'm just going to wander around the other side of it. You're okay, sweetheart. It'd be easier if you weren't wandering around like that. So if I'd have come in here and got a hold of her and he wasn't interested in me, I would have kind of snapped my fingers, done something like that to kind of get his attention. And when I got his attention, I would then hide around behind her. Okay? I don't have that problem. Like, say it was like that. I might go like this, and right there he looks at me, I'd hide over here. So that's why I'm really adamant about, like, unhandled folds. Every time you come in here, you are handling them, whether you're touching them or not. So right there, I might do a little something right here, and right as he hasn't looked at me yet, right when he looks at me, I'm going to go here. Because after a while, what you end up with, if when you get further along in the process, if they leave, like if they go wandering off, you can do that and whoop, you can, you can bring them, suck them right back to you. So you almost, it's not like you're teaching them a cue. But if they wander off and you start snapping your fingers or whatever little thing it is you're doing, when they finally come around, you kind of take it away. You basically, it's like negative reinforcement. After a while, you can teach them that if they look at you, that thing goes away. What he's doing right now is so important and it's developing curiosity. I always tell people, people think that a curious horse is a naughty horse or it's a horse that's not paying attention to you. No, a curious horse is what you want, especially during training stages. You want the horse to be interested in what you're doing. You want the horse to be curious about what they're learning. He's making this horse curious about who he is, what he's doing, being more comfortable around him, wanting to come up and be around him and sniff him and whatever. If you just turn around and you start chasing your horse with a halter when they don't want it, they're not curious about it, they don't want to be around you, they're not curious about you, they're completely uninterested in the training and it's going to make training them a billion times harder and worse because you're going to be training a horse that doesn't want to be trained, which encourages abuse to happen in training because people get frustrated and people start smacking them and people start saying no, bad, they start tying them down because the horse doesn't want to be around them. Again, you have to develop curiosity in order to have a positive training session with a horse. And that's exactly what he's doing. And more people who have foals should honestly listen to people like this. This is just such a good video. I'm, I'm actually, I've never seen this video before. I'm actually so glad I clicked on this because this is the perfect example of how to raise and train foals properly. 
let them be a horse and leave them alone. And then when you finally start training them, make them curious about you as a person and about the training. And it's going to go so much more smoothly. And you're just going to have better results. You're going to have a much nicer horse at the end of the day. Then the next step, what you can do is put your hand on her and bring it around here and he will boom. You know how you said you can't touch him? That right there, if you put your hand on her, it's not coming at him, it's part of mum, but she's got a growth on her, what's that? And they'll come over and that's the, that's the, first, that's the first touch, is them touching you like that. And you want to try to take your hand away before they leave, so you've really just got to have, you've just got to realise you're not trying to pat the foal, because you'll end up chasing them away. you really got to keep them thinking towards you and then you just work on it <coughs> from there um, and, it's a, and, and it's a process so I'm not going to do a lot with him today but so you can see right there that foal was really good because he was very aware of me and he hadn't kind of got into that yeah no i'm not concerned about your stage and it was very very easy to use his natural instincts you know honestly it's really concerning the fact that whoever owns that horse clearly doesn't know anything about horses because whoever owns that horse has a very curious foal that is very obviously willing to learn. That was the first time he went in with the foal. And after three minutes, the foal was already showing interest in him and the training. A foal like that is incredibly easy to train. And it just worries me, you know, going back to this video that I made. It worries me the amount of people who own horses who just have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea how to train them, no idea how to raise them. That foal would be the easiest foal ever to halter train. And this woman called out a professional trainer because she's probably chasing him around with a halter and has no idea what she's doing. People who don't know how to manage or handle animals should not have them because it's foals like that that end up being ruined. If, if Warwick hadn't gone out to talk to her, which thank God he did, that foal would have probably end up ruined. They would have ended up getting frustrated with him, tying him down somewhere, forcing him to wear a halter, having him pull back against the halter. You know, you see all these horses that are not trained to stand properly and people think it's just funny. Oh, it's hilarious that my horse is pulling back violently on the halter. Yeah, next thing you know that your horse has serious pole damage or breaks their neck. This is how horses are ruined. People raise babies and have no idea what they're doing. So you can see right there, that foal was really good because he was very aware of me and he hadn't kind of got into that, yeah, no, I'm not concerned about your stage. And it was very, very easy to use his natural instincts to get that first touch of my hand. So hopefully that'll give you something to think about when it comes to uh, dealing with foals. And I'll keep you updated on how we go with with young chance here when I when I do start handling him. Oh, I wish that video was longer. Honestly, I might make a second video about Warwick at some point in the future and react to another one of his videos. Again, I have seen a lot of his videos, or not a lot, I guess some. I have never seen a video of his that I disagreed with. I actually think he's a very good trainer. And a lot of people would be surprised because they're like, oh, you just hate on Western riders so much. Wrong. I hate on barrel racers. There's a huge difference because I actually think a lot of Western riders are phenomenal riders. I follow many of them on Instagram and I follow many Western trainers. I have nothing against Western riders. I think that Warwick is a great trainer. I would recommend him. I would recommend any of his videos. I love watching stuff like this. Really wholeheartedly agree with this message of just leaving foals alone, letting them grow up and being foals. I just really love that. So uh, thank you. Another, another really good video. Thank you, Warwick, for just being a great trainer. I really did not want this video to be a negative video, especially after my last video that I made where I just went in, which by the way, thank you guys so much for all the support on my last video. It got age restricted, which I knew it would. <sighs> 
that one was a hard one. So I'm glad that this was a very positive video to end the week on. Thank you again for watching this video and thank you again to Warwick. I'm going to link his channel below. Again, I highly recommend him. I think he's another fantastic trainer for you guys to follow. At least there's one trainer that's making Australia look good, you know, because Clinton. Anyway, guys, I love you so much. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.